Oh, season's greetings. Let's drink too many spirits while we talk about too many spirits. It's, it's too, too many, many spirits. spirits. This is a show where we drink our drinks and review your scary holiday horror stories. We're filming four episodes of this show all tonight, so right now we're a little out of it. By the next episode, we're gonna be ho 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 hammered if we're not already. <laughs> As always, we'll be enjoying a tasty beverage from our cocktail maestro, Stephen Lim. Stephen, what are we drinking? We got a good one. Brought to you by one of the members of our Patreon community, Kath. Are you guys ready for this? I, I guess so. so. I guess so, yeah. They named it the Ghost of Hangovers. Ah! That's good. That's good. You can make it at home. It's very easy. It's five ingredients, all right? First up, three ounces of pineapple juice. Steven, all right. now's a good time to point out how shimmery your outfit is. Yeah, look, you're oh, yeah? shining in the oh, yeah? moonlight. Oh. Is that am I shimmying right? Oh, shimmery. Oh, am I shimmering yeah, shimmering and shimmy? Well, shoes, by the way. Can you get one up here? Oh, okay, oh, okay. no, right. you gotta. Okay. You're showing us the bottoms of the shoe. You gotta yeah, show we us want the... to see the little jingle bells. The way this is framed looks really like it's like it. a nude shoot where the cups are covering your dong. <laughs> Throw in some mezcal, you know, about. I, I believe it's pronounced mezcal. Oh, sorry. Mezcal. Mezcal. Oh, I missed. <laughs> you missed the glass! <laughs> We're here for the show, so because I missed, I will punish you by doing double shot. Boom. What? That seems like you should punish yourself. Yeah, why are you punishing us? How did you Oh no, not the dong <laughs> shot again. Let's get some tequila in here. Tequila and mezcal. Tequila. So you're doing, I don't know how many of ounces That's of six ounces. I put in there, but <laughs> there's, there's something in there. And don't forget the yeah. lime juice. Better add in some juice. Love a lime. Oh yeah. Oh, but I don't know what's going on there. Tabasco. Literal no, amount. I don't like that at all. Actually, so we do Kath correct. Um, they did say two to four dashes of Tabasco, but I did more because you deserve it. I don't know what we did to deserve Steven's this. being thing. nasty tonight. Santa makes the rolls. I'm Santa. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ghost of Hangover Pass. Enjoy. Elf boy, bring me my drink. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. What the fuck? I am the ghost of the hangover, hangover pass. Oh, this is the one from Calf. Oh, I am delivered by oh, Calf. Oh, 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 Jesus Christ. They instructed you to ghost it up? No, they didn't say anything about that. But. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, it smells spicy. Well, yeah, there's a bunch of fucking spice in it. That makes sense. <laughs> it's actually pretty good when compared to the other ones. Are you just saying that because this is the only one that Steven didn't make? <laughs> is this the only one that Steven didn't make? You didn't design it. No, this was you. Now it's submitted. making sense. Oh, you're nasty. Mr. Bergara, you are nasty. Would you say I'm a mean one? Why, I wouldn't touch you with a... <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Mine's almost gone, I gotta be honest. It's episode three. That was good. Can I get a refill, please? Yep. You only got one more, so... mm. Ryan, we got more. Oh, thank you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, baby. <laughs> you know what the fucked up part about that is? I was picturing I was talking to Mari, <laughs> and then I looked up, and I saw Steven Lynn dressed as an elf, <laughs> and I was horrified. <laughs> Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> oh, God, delete that footage forever. No, keep it. I'm not going to watch this episode just because of that moment. Story number one. Oh, do we need one well, rate Steven's drink? That's, That's a, a 10. 10. Congrats, Steven. Your best drink yet. Oh, you didn't make this one. Oh, you didn't? Tough break. Our first story comes from Heather Emery on Facebook. It was Christmas, and my cousin started yelling that Santa was outside. Oh, shit. A man dressed as Santa was looking through the window. Everyone thought he was a distant relative, especially because he let himself in. That's a turn in the story I didn't wait. see. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, yeah, you, you kind of glossed over that bad boy there. As did the story. He came into the basement where we all were, handed out candy, and left. When he left, 
he walked into the thorn-filled prairie <laughs> at the end of the dead-end road and never came out. We later found out it wasn't our relative. No one ever figured out who it was. Wait, a thorn-filled prairie? How did they know this wasn't just a dude? That's what's scary, right? It's just a dude. I broke into your house. Here's a Reese's peanut butter cup. Time to go. <laughs> you know how robbers do? They break into your I house. Just, I was about to give my rating and you, I slapped the knee. I braced myself. That's not what you do every that's time. That's what I do every single rating. time. I'll flip this that's fire over mark. onto your boots. That's an eight out of 10. Oh shit. That's gonna be uh, nine out of ten. That's a, oh, I did not yeah, expect yeah, that yeah. from you. Uh, user at unsolved dash yeehaw from Tumblr. Every Christmas, my family sets up the Christmas tree. Hangs and stockings, normal shit, you know. I'm guessing this is the part I should mention that we have a marionette clown doll hanging in my room. No good. I would have led with that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, I didn't even realize the second sentence. So yeah, he's there all the time. <laughs> We're all a little scared of it, but my sister thinks he protects us from ghosts and shit. Last Christmas, I woke up, presents underneath the tree, and the doll was sitting on the couch, its painted eyes looking straight at me. My sister said she didn't touch it. You know, I had a ventriloquist doll when I was a boy. That scans. What was the doll's name? Friend? I had friends. <laughs> I had friends. The only friend you had was on strings. Hi, Shane, I want to hang out and play. Did you hear what I said? I said ventriloquist dummy, you piece of shit. Leave All right, alone. sir. <laughs> uh oh, he's doing it. It's, it's doing time. It. I didn't do it, Steven. We're a unit, dude. We're a, do we're a unit. We're not a unit, not when you get nasty. Huh? Steven Lim? Why me? I'm a sweetie! This, my friends, is the proof of Santa. <laughs> it's, a, it's a liquor joke. I'm gonna enjoy this shot with you guys, actually. Oh, wait, wait. Really? Oh. Cheers to that. Oh, wait, fucking this one first. Cheers. Cheers. Which one? Oh, this one. It's, it's... <laughs> that hurt. Oh, the pickle is nasty. Oh, the pickle is great. Oh, I gotta man. pee again, bro. Too bad. I'm gonna go pee behind the shed. You can't. Oh, wait, really? I do it all the time. It'll be quicker for me to do that than to go in the bathroom. Why don't we, cut? we could do that. It needs to stay in the episode that it came down to it, and Ryan <laughs> almost peed behind the shed. <laughs> Marionette story. Yeah, you let's have a dog now. What? Your dog appeared. I don't have a dog. Okay. I'm gonna give it two out of ten. Look, I just was not uh, uh, moved by it. I'm gonna give that one a seven out of 10 spirits, because I felt like it was very good. Next story. This is from, oh, Ryan. This is from boobs69. Wait, 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 hold on. Dory, I'm gonna have to take you back inside because boobs69420 has, boobs has spoken. Dory, I'm sorry, yeah, I gotta take you back inside. Sorry, Dory, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> Get it, get it, get it, go, come on, come on, get it, get it. Wait, that's right. Where'd I put my cards? Oh, they're right there. Jesus, man. Get it together. You get it together, dude. Boobs! <laughs> <laughs> you can't just stop a sentence shouting boobs into the night. <laughs> boobs! <laughs> boobs69420, who contributed a story last oh, night. Oh, An old friend of the show. There was that time I set fire to my hair on Christmas. Oh shit. Yeah, that's scary. It was really long at the time, so I just ran to the bathroom, my hair ablaze, and stuck my head under the tap. Probably should have used the shower, it'd have been quicker, but my Wait, hair was on fire. how did she set her hair on fire? <laughs> my hair was on fire, so you understand my panic. Have you ever set your hair on fire? <laughs> that's the end of the story. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> there is zero explanation for how the hair caught on fire. Boob69420. What's going on in, in your household where your hair's catching on fire willy-nilly? A Christmas candle? Perhaps. And they lean over to say, Happy Christmas, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta run to the bathroom. And they gotta run to the bathroom. They gotta run to the bathroom to fix it. Next story! Did we rate that one? Yeah, we did. We did? Wait, no, we didn't. Six. <laughs> <laughs> 
process. If there's room for critique, I would say a little more exposition as to why your hair caught on fire. I would have loved to know how your hair caught on fire. That's what I'm left with. This goes from at big scary fucking owls. <laughs> Okay, off to a good start. This is a 10 out of 10 story. I rate it 10 out of 10. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> when my parents moved into our current house about 30 years ago, they found a box of human ashes in the basement. That's scary as fuck. My dad called the family and was like, hey, <laughs> do you want your relative back? And they said, no, you can keep him. We usually just have the box on our enclosed porch that nobody uses, but we always bring them out for the holidays and put the dude on the mantle. The dude! <laughs> what the fuck, dude? You know what? I said 10 out of 10. I stand by it as a 10 out of 10 story, 10 out of 10. I was sort of pleasantly delighted that they took this person in as their own. What this could have been a monster. But what are you doing? maybe bury them in a forest somewhere. You know, if it was like a serial killer, eh, well, we threw you in a forest, eat shit. But if it's a nice person whose maybe family was just shitty, hey, a forest, ain't that nice? Now, but what if we're talking ghost theory here? What does that even mean? I'm glad you asked. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sometimes when someone dies a violent death or a death that's unsolved, all that that spirit needs to be released is a proper burial and the, tr and the truth to be out. And your answer is throw it in a forest or something. If they don't do that, but they set me on the mantle for Christmas every year, that's chill. I'm stuck here in eternal purgatory, but I get to sit next to a funny little nutcracker and chill during the holidays when they got all the twinkly little lights up. Sign me up. But imagine sitting next to a Christmas dinner every year and you can't have it. That sounds like torture. I'm just thinking about it and it sounds great. Ham? But you can't have it. It doesn't even matter. I'm happy I just thinking about hate it. I ham, ham, dude. Tastes like shit. Sounds like you got bad ham. You know what? I'm going to give it a, let me think, 10. That's, That's a, a 10. 10. That's There's too many spirits. Uh, a couple more stories. Love. God. Love. Love. Just look at, the, look at the power of my fingers. That's crazy. Look how fucked up this is. I was expecting you to have this off by. You know what, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, you just gotta do that. Okay. Next story. Me. <laughs> this is from IG Will on Instagram. Spent Christmas in the Alpine region of Germany where Krampus is a popular character. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, just don't, all right. On one night, people dress up as Krampus and run around the city in parades for their amusement and to scare kids. When my father and I walked home from the parade, I stopped to tie my shoe and my father turned around to me. Then I looked over his shoulder and saw a Krampus standing at the end of the alley. A Krampus? A Krampus! Wait, that makes it seem like they're a species, like a Bigfoot. Were you listening to the fucking story? I literally just said on one night, people dress up as Krampus. Yeah, but you said a Krampus as if it was like a normal, like an actual yes, Krampus. because this is an event where people dress up as Krampus. Yeah, but you, mean, you said it in a way that was like an actual... I'm reading the story. I didn't say it like that. Well, you delivery left a lot to be desired. That's all I'm going to say. I stopped to tie my shoe and my father turned... You turned I stopped to turn my... I stopped to tie my shoe. My, <laughs> my, my father turned it in his pants. <laughs> you, you threw off my... Mojo. <laughs> I stopped to tie my shoe and my father turned around to me. You adjusting your horn as you're trying to Shut get up. <laughs> I'm trying to tell a story about Krampus. Just listen to me. <laughs> I stopped to tie my shoe and my father turned around to me. Then I looked over his shoulder and oh, saw a, a Krampus standing at the end of the alley. I told my father and when he turned around, the Krampus was gone. That's not the end. I looked over my shoulder the whole way home. <laughs> At night, I dreamed of the Krampus telling me not to tell my parents about him or there would be no gifts for me this Christmas. Maybe it was just my childish imagination or not. It landed on your shoulder. <laughs> and you hit your horn on the way over. <laughs> Where is it? 
Is it over there? <laughs> Where is it? Oh, shit. Whoa! Oh, that was good! That was really nice throw. A Krampus visiting you in your dreams? Have, has, have you ever dreamed of Krampus? I've never dreamed of, camp of Krampus, no. Maybe you will now. I'll let you know tomorrow. Seven. Seven. I'm gonna give it a four. Four spirits out of ten. That's fair. One more from Ryan, then it's time... ...for the box. Oosh! What's in the box? What's in the box? Here comes from user Jillian Zena from Instagram. Maybe like 12 years ago, my dad put out the Christmas gifts too close to the wood-burning stove. Uh-oh, this sounds scary. This sounds bad. And they caught on fire. Yeah, bad. <laughs> Listen, kids. All your Christmas presents, they're ashes now. Your Furbies are dead. <laughs> your, your Furbies, your crisp. Chia pets. Continue the story about the Furbies. You have like a rogue hair that's coming down your face. It's kind of forming a Kylo Ren kind of scar. <laughs> We all got out of the house while my mom tried to put out the fire. Oh shit, wait. The house caught on fire? Yeah, Holy dude, fuck. that's why when you started telling the story, I was like, this sounds fucked up. At one point, my sister, who was like 13 at the time, <laughs> ran back in the house. No, wait, what? To get her cell phone, LOL. <laughs> they're important. I hope their house was okay. Look, you know, fires are a, a, a serious thing. We take care of ours here. All right, we, look, at, look at us. We're nurturing this fire as two parents here. We feed it. We feed it, we nurture hungry. it. We, we give it the love and attention that it needs. Oh, we gotta rate that story. Six. I'm gonna give that one a nine because- A nine? Yeah, well, let me tell you. A lot of the stories we've discussed tonight have been in the realm of, what do you think of that? You think that happened? I don't know. We didn't know what to make of that. This one is decisive. A home caught fire. My sister did a funny thing. The end. I got distracted by your long ass creepy nails just <laughs> punctuating everywhere. Anyway, I love that story. It's a nine. Now, are you excited, Ryan? Wait, wait, wait. Ho, 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 ho. A letter in our mailbox. Ho, 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 ho. A letter. We I hope, hope this story rocks. rocks. I said we. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reveal it. Reveal it. Oh, shit. Wait, whose who story is this? Yours? This one's mine. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, take it easy. Papa Krampus is going to tell us a tale. <laughs> this is from Bookworm Brins on Instagram. <laughs> as you do as a child. That's a weird way to start a story. <laughs> as you do as a child, you run down to the living room to try to catch Santa in the action. Does that mean? Yeah, wait, is he talking about is Santa? He talking about pork and I ran down to catch Santa in the act when I found it wasn't Santa, <laughs> but a man completely dark, just standing in the corner of the room. All he said... <laughs> all he said was... Shh. <laughs> wait, wait, did he say that or did he do this too? Shh. It's Ebony Maw from fucking Avengers. He says we don't it, talk about Ebony Maw much, but he says shout out to cool. Ebony Maw. All he said was... Shh. And he disappeared right before my eyes. Holy shit! That's a scary story! Uh, the mailbox has blessed us again. Thank you, mailbox! Uh, thank you, mailbox. <laughs> you never fail mailbox, us! Mailbox, you never fail me! That's too many, I mean, that's too many spirits. We got it, that's an yeah, incredible yeah, story to end up. Don't just, too you are, it's too, too many spirits. Too many spirits. <laughs> okay, everybody, we'll see you next week for the thrilling conclusion. Maybe we'll fight each other over the fire. Who knows? Um, <laughs> it may come to blows. We're not sure. Or ho ho hoes. Huh? He said it can't make come to blows. Or ho ho hoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Let's cut. Yeah. What the hell funny. is that?